Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be doing something really, really cool. We are gonna show how to install multiple embeddings using multiple different embedding models on the same vector database, on the same text collection, and then how you can run side-by-side -side queries, which is something that comes up all the time actually, which is how do you compare and evaluate the effectiveness of a particular embedding model for a particular set of knowledge. So that's what we're gonna be walking through. Where I wanted to start today, um, you can see up on the screen behind me, this is actually the LLMware GitHub repository. If you haven't been here in a while, check it out. We launched, as many of you may know, in October, kind of mid-October timeframe. A lot has happened since then. And one of the things we're pretty excited about is we just rolled out after 15 0.1 releases, we actually just rolled out 0.2. Two. And 0 0.2 brings a lot of really cool things to the table. I want to just spend a minute to call some of these things out because we're going to be using it in the demo that I'm going to show you. One of the really big features of 0 0.2 is that we've really brought in Postgres and brought in first tier support for Postgres, both as a text collection database, as well as a vector database, as well as for text search. Many of you know Postgres is probably one of the granddaddies of databases. It's been around for 35 years, but it's had a huge resurgence. I actually saw something recently as the turn of the year that Postgres was voted database of the year by a lot of the people that do that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of momentum and a lot of excitement around the Postgres community. And so we wanted to bring it in as an underpinning in LLMware so you can start connecting it into LLM-based workflows and you can start tapping into these capabilities of Postgres as a single stop database where you can run all of these capabilities on a single data store. So we're gonna be using Postgres in the example that I'm gonna show you. I have a local instance of Postgres actually that's gonna be running. And one of the things that we've provided in our repository that we'd encourage you to check out um, are these super easy Docker Compose scripts. It's a great way if you just wanna quickly get a database up and running on your local machine, get Docker installed. If you're running on a Mac or on Windows, you know, install Docker Desktop. Once you have Docker Desktop running, basically pull down this little Docker Compose file run Docker Compose pointing at that file. And about two minutes later, you are gonna have an instance of Postgres you know, running on your machine. That is exactly what I've done, nothing more, nothing less. And now I'm gonna actually flip over just to show you this actually from the command line. I've just done a Docker PS. You can see all the stuff I've got running on my machine. And the thing you're gonna look for is this. This is the PG vector implementation with that extension of Postgres. It has all Postgres batteries included. All of the dependencies for Postgres, we actually bring into the LLMware package. So once you pip install LLMware, you fire up this Docker Compose script, you are good to go to start actually parsing some documents, putting and indexing that information in Postgres, and then starting to run embeddings against it and doing vector-based search as well. So with that as a quick background, let me go ahead and jump into the example for today. And this is an example that we have. It's using multiple embeddings. It's actually in the embeddings folder in our examples in the repository that we were just looking at. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna set the active database to be Postgres. What this is gonna do is as we parse documents, we're gonna look at around 15 contracts. We're just gonna keep it nice and simple, a hello world kind of example. Um, these 15 contracts, we are gonna parse and decompose into 1272 text chunks. We're gonna store and index those text chunks in Postgres. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through four different embeddings on the same Postgres database using the PG vector implementation. It's just an extension of Postgres that comes in the box with Postgres. So let's scroll up and let's actually look at this code. So scroll up this way. So for those who've seen some of our demos before, we're just gonna create a library. A library is the organizing construct in LLMware. And once we've created that library, we're gonna check what's called the library card, which is just a way, a dictionary that gives you all the information about that library. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see zero embeddings. We haven't created any embeddings at that point. But then the fun really begins and the core of the demo is right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna install four different embeddings, okay? On the same set of content. So first, we're gonna apply just a very popular open source, a mini sentence transformer. It's one of the models that we use a lot. We include it default in the LLMware catalog. So all you have to do to invoke it is mini LM expert. It picks up all the configuration detail, all the implementation detail, and we can go and implement any kind of embedding using that model. So to do the embedding, you can see it's a simple one-liner. You install the embedding on the library that we just created. You apply now the mini LM expert model. We're gonna put it in the vector database, which as you saw below is a PG vector. The variable here, you're gonna see this as we're running through the example. Depending on the machine you're running it on, the memory and the size of the model, you may need to adjust the batch size. 
Generally, bigger is better. It's going to run faster with larger batches, but you may wind up being memory constrained. And depending on the topology you have of all those different components, you may need to ratchet down that batch size accordingly. We've included a few different batch sizes just so you can kind of see how easy that is to adjust. So first, we're going to pick the smallest model. Second, we're going to pick the extremely popular OpenAI text betting ADA model. So you will need to actually run this locally. You will need to provide um, up at the top of the script. Just pass in your OpenAI key. Uh, you'll see it. It's just a string that you have to enter on the example. So we're going to go out to OpenAI. We're going to bring back those embeddings. We're going to store it locally on our PG vector database. Third, we're actually going to run through an industry fine-tuned a transformer model that we've developed for embeddings. It's very specific to kind of regulatory contracts, legal, it's the industry BERT SEC. We're gonna run embeddings with that. And then for the last embedding, what we wanted to do was something a little different. So if you've looked at the sentence transformer library, they have about 40 or so pre-trained sentence transformers. They're all available in open source. So what we've provided is again, a very, very simple way to, if you see a model that you like, identify that model, um, here you can call it out simply by the name, uh, the canonical name in that sentence transformer library. It gets registered in our catalog. The only two key pieces of information you do need to provide is the embedding dimensions and the context window. And then we can handle the implementation of that sentence transformer model. So we're gonna register that new model kind of on the fly. And then we're gonna use this as our fourth embedding as we go through this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back, we're gonna print out that library card just to look at the embedding record. So you can see how four different embeddings have been created on the exact same set of content. And then we're gonna show how you use them. And using the models, again, couldn't be simpler. For those who've used LLMware, and we do have some other basic tutorials on this, you're gonna instantiate a query object. You're gonna pass your library into that query object. And then all you're gonna do is provide the identifier of the embedding model name. That actually helps you know, internally for LLMware to identify from the embedding record which embedding model you want to use and to apply the appropriate embedding model then to process the query. You can see we've created two different query objects. Query one, we're actually picking the smallest model, the mini LLM expert. Query two, we're gonna pick the biggest one, the text embedding ADA. Of course, um, you could query number three and query number four for the other two embeddings, but just for purpose of illustration, we, we picked those two. Then to run a query, it's as simple as invoking the semantic query method, passing in your sample query, and then we're gonna print out and display the results. So we're gonna go through a lot of things really, really fast. What we would encourage you to do, spend some time really unpacking this example because there's a ton of stuff that you can go do with this. And as we said at the very beginning, one of the most useful applications of this recipe is to do a side-by-side -side comparison of is this embedding model, is it yielding the same results, better results, or different results, depending on the particular domain that I have in a library. So with this simple recipe, you're able to adapt the content that's going into the library. You're able to adapt then the embedding models that you select. And then we would really encourage you to experiment with it, run a whole bunch of queries and see where you're getting you know, better or different results with different models. So that is it. Again, these are some agreements. They're all in our sample repository. So up front at the top, we're just gonna pull those down. So this is batteries included just copy paste and run and you can go run this example on a local machine we're going to ask a fairly basic question which is what is the sale bonus it's one of the terms that's defined in the agreement relatively common but not completely common just to see how the semantic embedding was working and was it able to identify that key phrase so with that, let's dive in. We are gonna go run this example. I hope you guys are excited. Nothing like seeing some embeddings flying out in front of you. So step one, we parsed and text chunk the 15 PDFs. You can see that happened really, really fast. 1.8 seconds, we parsed those 15 contracts. We decomposed it into 1,272 blocks. And now we're off and running. So we've just completed the first set of embeddings, the mini LM expert. You can see as we set the batch size, it was doing these in chunks of 200 embeddings. That model, one of the things we really like about the mini LM expert is it's really, really fast. So we clipped through those very, very quickly, created those embeddings. You can see we've now completed the second embedding, which is the text embedding ADA on the OpenAI. So that was actually calling OpenAI, pulling back that batch of 500 embeddings, loading and storing it in our PG vector, our Postgres database. We're now running through our locally installed, our custom industry BERT SEC model. This one, you can see we set the batch size at 100. It's a slightly larger model than the mini LM expert, so you can see it does run a little bit slower. And just to be a little nicer to the memory, we, we set it at, at a batch size of 100 as opposed to a batch size of 200. This is gonna be done in just a minute, and then we're gonna flip over to the final embedding, which was that custom sentence 
transformer that we pulled in and registered from the sentence transformer library. You can ignore this. I probably should have suppressed PyTorch deprecation warnings for doing the demo, but you can see that's just a, a warning from PyTorch. We are now loading and pulling in that model. And now we're creating these embeddings and batches of 300 on PG vector. This is gonna run for you know another probably 30 seconds or so. Then once we're done with all of the embeddings, Remember, we're gonna look at the embedding record for the library, which is gonna show us these four embeddings registered. And then we're gonna run this sample side-by-side -side query, just using two of the embeddings for the purpose of a quick illustration. So we are almost done. It's gonna be done in just a second. Here we go. All right, now we are done. Okay, let's take a look at the results. So as I said, we went through those four rounds of embeddings. You could see them going as we were clicking through them. One thing you should also know is we have an integrated status manager. So a status is being written in the context of doing those embeddings, but just imagine you have a client application, you can actually pull that. So you can be getting that, you can be displaying it as a, a bar chart or some progress bar um, out to a user if it is a large embedding job. But now once we're done, you can see the embedding record of the library. It shows, it's beautiful, shows us the four different embeddings with the four different embedding models. You can see then um, some of the characteristics of those embedding models. And the really nice thing that we wanted to confirm, we did, 1,272 embedded blocks on each of them. We then, again, just for the purpose of kind of simplicity, we ran through two samples. One we ran on the mini LM expert, and you can see the results here. The second then on ADA. Now, a couple of things just to highlight as you start experimenting and spending some time looking at this. One of the things that we printed out is the actual embedding distance. Now, it's not necessarily gonna be an apples to apples comparison for different models. They're gonna normalize differently. The geometry of their embedding space is gonna be a little bit different. So it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, lower is better or higher is better, but it does tell you something about the dimensionality of the embedding geometry. So what you see for the mini LM expert, the top results, just as we had hoped, talk all about you know, sale bonus and then a bunch of other things that were clearly related to it in terms of compensation, incentive compensation and bonus. But what was really interesting is this set of examples was a 0 0.77, 0 0.78 in its normalized embedding space. And then the next set of examples was a big chunk drop off. One of the things that's really useful where you can use the geometry of the semantic embedding space is you can actually start using this distance to give you a sense of how similar something is or to use it as a cutoff to determine how many results should you be considering. Now, when we scroll down and we look at the ADA embedding space, what's interesting is it, it pulled up largely the same results. And that's probably not that big of a surprise. This was a relatively small document set with a relatively simple query. I think I'd be reluctant to draw too many conclusions. But what it can show you sometimes is that small models sometimes can be just as effective depending upon the nature of the domain and giving you very, very effective retrieval strategies. Now, the interesting thing about the ADA space is it's normalized a little differently. The starting distance from the query is small and then as it jumped to kind of the next tranche of results that it found, that embedding geometry was a little bit smaller. The distance was a little bit closer. And again, it's not to say that necessarily one is better or worse. Clearly in the way that ADA geometry is working of these embedding distances, it saw these things as more closely related. That is probably giving you a more granular embedding geometry that is gonna serve you well as you go into a much, much larger set of embeddings. So we have covered a lot of ground. We we installed Postgres, we ran through, we created a library of contracts, we built 1,272 text chunks, we ran it through four different embedding models, and then we did a side-by-side -side comparison of actually looking at some query results against two different models. So we hope you have enjoyed today's video. Please go back, check out the example, feel free to experiment with this. Hopefully this is a really good recipe as you're starting to look at how do you compare side-by-side -side various different embedding models. Thanks again, everybody. Hope everyone has a wonderful day and um, tune in for our next video. Thanks, everyone.